Hello, everybody. Give me a second. I have to set up my camera. <laughs> Excuse me while I adjust and get you guys a, a good view of what's going on here. My camera is not cooperating with me. Alright, that's a little bit better. <laughs> Okay. How's everybody today? Don't forget to invite your friends. Come join us this morning. We're going to have some fun. Give it another minute or two. And Hi, Sharon. Give, give it another minute or two and we'll get some more people in here to join us. Um... If you don't already know, um, Catherine Pooler has her very own shop up and it's the soft opening all this week. So if you want to go and shop, if you go to Catherine Pooler's site, which is CatherinePooler.com, you can right at the very top, it's right, right above all of her tabs, uh, there's a shop. So you just hit the pink tab and you can go and shop for these items here, along with a lot of other things that have come in the stamp of approval kit, uh, the first three. Okay, and these ones are specifically designed by Catherine. Hello from Puerto Rico. Hi, Vivian. Yep, come and introduce yourselves. You'll have to excuse my nails. This is what happens when you get a cheap manicure. Not nice. Hi, Christy. We'll get started really soon. Don't forget to invite your friends because we're going to do some stamping. All right, so I'll show you guys who are here. If you already haven't seen, hi Linda. If you already haven't seen them on Catherine's website or are over at Stamp Nation, um, Catherine Pooler has designed a few stamp sets of her very own. This one is called Wild Bloom. Uh, second one is called And Statements. Yep, very useful. And of course, one of my favorites, the And Dies. Now it doesn't come with this particular strip. This is something I've added just to hold all my dies in place. Um, it's just a piece of photo magnet paper from the dollar store that's sticky backed. I just stuck it in there to hold them on. All right. Wow. I'm surprised that I haven't got more people in here this morning, but, uh, I guess with you five, <laughs> we might as well get started, I guess. Um, so this morning I'm cheating and I'm showing you something ahead of time. <laughs> um, Carrie, who is actually one of the uh, Stamp Nation member as well. She designed a sketch for Split Coast Stamp. Hi, Catherine. Uh, Carrie designed this sketch for Split Coast Stampers tomorrow. And I, uh, being behind the eight ball, hi, Catherine, um, need to get my card done. So I thought, ah, oh, what the heck, we'll have everybody else join me today to make my card for this sketch. So this is the sketch that I'm going to use. But this is where you guys all come into play. You guys get to help me kind of choose colors. Let's start with colors. So I'll say this is one, two, three, and four. So there's lots of neat stuff. There's like really warm palette with lots of oranges and reds and yellows. And then there's a very, very pretty palette. I love the purples and the fuchsia and the reds. So there's that one, that's number two. And then this one's kind of different, different for me anyway. There's kind of like a soft pink, a medium toned orange, um, a blue and a navy. So that's number three. 
And then we have one with a lot of kind of navy and purple shades right to kind of a warm, warm yellow. Yeah, it's pretty, isn't it? So you guys choose what color palette am I going to use for my card today? One, two, three, or four. Linda says one. <laughs> okay. Oh, see, a lot of people like three. Okay. I got three votes for three. <laughs> Oh, another vote. Well, I guess. Sorry, Linda, you're outnumbered. <laughs> so I guess we'll go with three. So I um, pre-selected them to make my job a little easier here. Um, did I grab the right bundle? <laughs> no, I did not. Okay. Let's set this aside. And I'm going to use a fair amount of Memento inks. I've got Summer Sky, Nautical Blue, Cantaloupe, and then um, a Simon Says Stamp Hybrid Ink Rosy Cheeks. So we're going to use those inks. Well, let's put them up there for the moment. Once again, there is the sketch that I am using today because I'm behind. <laughs> and I have gone ahead and pre-cut and scored my four and a quarter by four and a quarter um, base. So that's ready to go. I use the El Cheapo cardstock because actually Calgary doesn't, it only has one scrapbook store now and I have a hard time finding supplies that, that don't have to be ordered in from the States. I'm, I live near Calgary. So I use Michael's 110 pound. It's really nice cardstock and I actually use this for coloring too for, with my Kovacs. I've also die cut my just a frame out of the same cardstock, nice heavyweight, and then we're going to play on this. All right. So hopefully you guys can kind of see the sketch and the. Good morning, Colleen. And now I need your help. I need to know. Let's go stamp sets here. Um, of the two of the new stamp sets, which one would you like to see? Wild Bloom, number one, or the and statements, number two? What would you guys like to see with that color palette? Whatever you'd like to see. What would you guys like? Number two, Wild Bloom. Ooh, this could be interesting too. The Anne's. Number two, number two, okay. Another vote for Wild Bloom. I'm still going number two. <laughs> All right, any more votes? Any more votes? I'm kind of gearing towards this one, but that's all right. That's what you guys are here for. You guys need to decide for me. <laughs> both? Yeah, we could use both for sure. Number two, Colleen is number one. Both? Both? Both. Shall we do both? All right. Um, yeah, let's use both. Um, let's see. Background, because this is a larger stamp set, let's start there and we'll move back to the and sentiments here. Um, the other thing, if you guys weren't aware, this was a stamp set that was uh, released in the Friendship Collection of Stamp of Approval. It's called Eva's Favorite Flowers. And Catherine absolutely did amazing. She brought in dye. So if you haven't shopped, make sure you shop. All right. Just thought I'd pop in. Okay. Let's get this one set up here. <laughs> wow. My blocks are really dirty. <laughs> I'll have to excuse, excuse my blocks. Actually, maybe I'll bring in my mini Misty. I know Winnie and Walter, yeehaw! That was a that was a definitely a good choice because not that I don't enjoy fussy cutting, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's start with actually we're gonna do this one. Um, I want to start off off the card. 
Now, if you didn't check out Catherine Pooler's blog, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Catherine was talking about how do you line up these little fellas? Well, she came up with a little trick. If you were to look at this on the on your liners, you transpose it. So this one, if you move it over, it's basically going to sit right over top. So she had recommended that you take a little bit of a Sharpie and you mark that. So this one sits this way. So my little mark of Sharpie, I did the same on this one. So this is how it overlays to make sure that everything matches up. So just a neat trick, which I didn't know until the other day. Thank you, Catherine. But you know what? It works beautifully. Okay. So I'm going to stick this in our mini misty here. I just got this one the other day. Finally, <laughs> finally, finally broke down and bought my mouth. Oh, it's so sticky. Finally broke down and bought one. I hadn't had one. So, all right. Now, um, okay. So let's start with color combo for our blooms shall we go light blue and then dark blue with the the leaves or shall we go what i'm gonna say um let's say the rosy cheek the rosy cheeks and the navy blue so w would you like to go light blue or pink the blues okay i love that color Blues, 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 boy, blue, yeah. <laughs> okay, blues it is. I see a lot of blue up there. So let's start with our light color. This is Summer Sky. I'm going to be off camera here for a second. We're going to ink up that solid floral base. And hopefully this is going to be juicy enough here. <laughs> The nice thing about having a stamp positioner like the Misty is that if it's not dark enough or you don't do a perfect stamping job, you can go back and ink it up again. So thank God for that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add another layer of our light or summer sky. Okay. Just to darken that up. So notice where our Sharpie mark is on our blooms. And it's still being very ornery. I'm just going to go in and see if I can get that one spot. There, that's a little better. Okay. So without moving it, I'm just going to peel off our backer. I'll clean that in a minute. And I'm going to peel off the leaf part, remembering that our matchup was on the bottom there. And I'm just going to line everything up. And you know what? Actually, I kind of like that if you skew it another direction, that things don't necessarily line up. It looks more organic. But um, today we'll line it up. Of course, I'm going to be finicky here. Okay. So I think it's pretty good. Let's pick it up. Exactly. I mean, maybe it doesn't have to overlap, right, Catherine? I mean, think outside the box. I really wasn't worried about it matching up because I liked the fact that it was kind of skewed and it fell off here and it fell off there. Okay, so I've got our oh nautical blue memento. We're going to ink up our little leaves off the side. Sorry. That's the one thing about Periscope. It should be the other way. Although, you probably couldn't see the comments and everything. Okay. Oh, I love that blue. Yummy. All right. I think what we'll do is... I think you always kind of want to work in odds. So, either you have a single of something, or you have three of something, or five of something. So, let's go and repeat that again. I think we'll stick with the blue. I know, gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, 
Um, I'm going to just literally flip our cardstock around and I'm going to reposition this again and we're going to fall off our card because that just makes it more interesting and, and we're going to stamp this again so make sure our magnets are holding our cardstock. Hello <laughs> Esther from England, welcome welcome. All right, so I'm just going to pick up that solid floral base again. I think we'll stick with the... <laughs> I've got ink still on there. That's all right. Um, use our summer sky ink off to the side here. This one apparently is not juicy enough. We're going to stamp this once again. Hanging it off that panel. Making sure I get a good impression. Oh, that one turned out much better. I am going to go in and ink it just one more time to get the same amount of ink as we have on our other one. There we go. And I'm going to peel that off and bring in our leaves again. I am, before I go and do this, I am going to bring in my scrubby though, before I go and set that down, because guaranteed, <laughs> I'm going to get placement of ink where I do not want it. So I'm just going to take a, take it and quickly clean it. And then once again, we are going to line everything up. And this time, I don't remember where the... This is why you should make note of these things. <laughs> All right, that's a pretty good matchup. Okay, looks good for positioning, attaching it to my lid. We're going to use our, our nautical blue again over top. I love this color combination. It's so... It reminds me of Twal. Or actually, it reminds me of my grandma's dishes. <laughs> from when I was a kid. <gasps> yeah. All right. I have got to clean off my Misty because, <laughs> look, before I go and transfer it everywhere, clean off my stamp in the process here. There we go. Um, baby wipes, reusable when you stick them in a Ziploc container. Just a handy little tip for you. All right, and once again, let's do our rule of th odds. What brand is the Nami? It's a Memento. I use these um, quite often. Yeah, I think everybody's grandma had a version of those. I think my grandma even had a red set. <laughs> um, let's leave room maybe for a sentiment. So I'm going to push this one up a bit and let's tuck it maybe here a little bit more peekaboo and I'm making a mental note there is our you you're welcome yeah um Catherine and Maureen they use a lot of uh I just got a shipment of backorder products that sold out. So I have, ha, ah, okay. <laughs> have fun, Catherine. <laughs> That's all right. I'll uh, try and post it to YouTube for you, Catherine, so you can link it too. Um, Catherine and um, Maureen use a lot of different inks. Now, because I'm more of a colorist, than a stamper per se not that I'm not stamper it just I didn't have a lot of colored ink because I would tend to use grays or browns or blacks because I was using line images to color so I had to <laughs> invest in some colored inks and I'm still not even there <laughs> just one of those things all right so our you our marked you was in the top corner so I'm going to do the same with the leaf accent, knowing that it's also up in that top corner. I'm going to do a little bit of a lineup job here, ever so carefully. Like I said, if it falls off, ah, whatever. It's still so pretty. Okay, sticking that down. 
We're using the nautical blue again to overlay. Okay. Oh, I love it. All right. So I'm just going to leave that stamp in there for the moment. So if you're just joining us, um, I had everybody choose, um, choose a color palette based on these four and they chose this one. So we're using like a navy, a light blue, an orange and a pink. So I've got to bring the orange and the pink in somewhere. Um, now on the wild bloom set, there are some teeny tinies. There's a couple of blooms in different sizes. There's um, a double dot and some little itty bitty dots. So I think that's where we'll pull in the other colors um, to use in our color palette. Um, the other thing I want to make sure, because we are using a, a sketch, I am going to use this frame. So I have to make sure that I either put the sentiment on this aspect or the sentiment has to be far enough in so that that frame it's not tucked underneath the frame um so maybe we'll put our sentiment on first now this is where we can get inventive um is there anything in particular you guys would like to see used um we can use a single word we can try and use multiple words um what do you think kind of fits the mood of kind of where we're going? What would you like to see? Maybe love or kisses, kisses and hugs. Um, love you. Yeah, single word. What, what, what would you like to see? I see a love. Vivian likes the word love. Peace. Love you. Okay. Yeah, aren't they pretty? Yeah, what would you guys like to see for sentiment? Love you is mentioned. Love. Joy. Yeah, joy could be used for just about any occasion, couldn't it? Because it's such a, a great word. Anybody else? Anybody? Uh, love you is fine. Anybody else for a vote? All right, I've seen a couple of votes for love you, so let's go that direction. Okay. Um, let's peel off the love to start here. And I know we will have to kind of tuck it. Now, um, sorry for my arm in the way. <laughs> How does, I'm just trying to think layout here, something like that, something offset so it fits in the void, it doesn't overlap our blooms too much so it doesn't, so you can't tell what it says. How does that kind of catch you? Does that kind of work? Something like that? All right. I'm just going to bring in our mini Misty here, but I have got to clean it off. Otherwise, we're going to have some issues with ink. All right. I'm going to just bring in the base again and I'm I'm going to put the I'm, I'm going to put the frame back on just to make sure that we don't overlap. So, I'm going to Tack down our frame as well as our base. Let's position those so they can be seen. I'm going to do one at a time, I think, just to make it a little easier. Um, now, should we go... We still need to bring in our yellow and our pink. How about a sentiment that fades maybe from one to the other just the yellow so we can go one or the other or both 
What would you guys like to see? I've got to use both colors. A fade. I'll put, say, more yellow on the love and bleed the yellow down to the U. And then we'll put a little bit of pink on the bottom. A yellow. Okay, let's do a little bit of fade. This is where the misty comes in very handy. Okay, so the U, or sorry, the love, we're going to go straight yellow. <laughs> I know, I'm just kind of thinking the same thing about the pink. I'm like, hmm, how are we going to pull that sucker in there? I'm going to go one more time with our yellow to make sure that we get nice, even coverage. Okay, so let's leave that at that. Let's bring in the U. Okay, I'm going to sort of not really touch them, but kind of intermingle them a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's pick this up. Now, this is where you can get inventive, and this is where you can get really fun techniques. Now, if you take your ink and do the whole thing, okay, do the whole thing, then either go in with a piece of paper towel or a baby wipe, and I'm just going to soften that or almost get rid of it. It won't totally disappear, but it'll be close. So if you just see the top of the U is colored just solely with that yellow ink. See, it took off the majority of that ink. Now, um, go in and thoroughly clean your stamp. I usually try and dry it. <laughs> That's what arms are for, right? <laughs> then you're going to take your pink ink. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to do the whole thing because I just find it way easier than trying to fudge it. Come back with your baby wipe again and you're going to blot off the opposite side. So your lighter pink is now at the top and your dark pink or solid pink is at the bottom. Okay. See, you get a gradient. So the top is yellow and the pink is at the bottom. Now, I think we need a little bit more pink. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to do it again. And you can actually even take your finger and blot ink off. Or, or lessen the amount of ink that's sitting on top of that stamp. So we just added a little bit more pink so it blends through. Now you could actually have gone and done the same thing with the love and done it the opposite way. Whereas the top of the love could have been pink. So now we've tied our light blue, dark blue, yellow, and our pink in there. Ha ha. One way to do it. Okay. I am going to take the frame off. Because I don't want to get it all gunky. And... I'm a spotty dotty person. I love the fact that Catherine puts these little mini dots in because um, I like to create confetti effects or use them to fill in um, areas that need a little touch more color but like not a great deal of color. So I've got the smallest dot from the Wild Bloom set, this one right here loaded on just my little teeny acrylic block. And that's where I'm going to pull in once again. I'm going to pull in our cantaloupe color, which is another memento. And then our rosy cheeks color. This is the one from Simon Says Stamp. Okay, so we're going to pull those colors in again just by using a tiny itty bitty dot. Like, it's so simple so simple. Now remembering that frame will be covering the outside. I don't really necessarily have to go in there, but you might have one that peeks out and that's always pretty too. So I'm remember if you remember to you want to work in threes or odd numbers. Uh, it's funny Catherine was talking about um dots and spots and sequins and 
how do you make a sequence look good? Well, if you remember um, triangles, let me just pull this aside for one second. Okay, if you've got a grid and you want to position your sequence really nicely, think about a grid. You never want to put in a sequence in the same row or the same direction. So if you put a sequence here, you're not going to put a sequence in the same line. You want to put a sequence somewhere off to another side. And same goes, you don't want to put it in the same row, this way or this way. It just, it looks more appealing and you make yourselves triangles by doing that. Okay, just a rule of thumb. Okay, let's, I'm actually going to switch up our dot. I'm going to switch up, hopefully I don't lose that one, for our larger dot. And we're going to go and grab our cantaloupe color. Once again, you don't need a lot of them. Um, another good thing to remember is to cluster things so that you still have white space. I would still like to have a little bit of white space here. It makes your sentiment a lot easier to read if your eye has a rest. Oh, went for the wrong color. Hang on. <laughs> and once again, our frame may hide a few of these, but that's not so bad there. All right, and we'll put a few down here. So clustering is good, remembering your triangles. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put one more up here. And let your eye rest. So there's enough space around here. So it's not, um, it's, it, there's not too much stuff. So your eye doesn't go, oh my God, I can't even read the sentiment because there's too much crap up there. All right. So that is super cute. Now the other thing you could do too, um, I really like a teeny tiny dot, is that you could bring in a Copic marker and just do teeny tiny itty bitty dots using the pink and the, the yellow would be very, very pretty. Hello everybody to who's just joined here. I am going to, yeah, see, see we don't have any peaky peaky. So let's go, I'm going to put one more. One more yellow one in there and see if we have enough peeking out. Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. All right. Um, so going back to the sketch that I have to do, um, you guys get the preview because it gets uh, put up tomorrow. Um, we do have to have some form of banner up here. Um... I don't know if I should go, I should go, probably go blue because it'll stand out a little better. So this is what we've got so far. Um, I kind of like it. I like it. It's so pretty. Um, but we need it to pop because our frame is white and our card is white and we need a touch more color. So should I go in matte the base in pink or our kind of our orange yellow hi barbie what what do you think should we add a little touch more pink or a little touch more yellow it's up to you guys yes and we could incorporate a pink ribbon or whatever color we put as that matte into the little banner that's a great idea let's do that you guys tell me what color I should put as the mat. Let's see if I can find a matching pink. It's funny how um, you have to find the right pink to match if it's going to be pink. Yeah, I could do pink, pink mat, yellow banner. Yeah, or vice versa. Pink. <laughs> yeah. Change up your mind. Sure. <laughs> I have to find the right pink here. That's pretty darn good match. Ha ha, I got lucky. So I'm going to cheat here and make sure I don't want 
too much color showing because our card is really not that big. So I'm going to take my pencil. This guarantees that the mat <laughs> will fit when I actually cut it because guaranteed if I went and measured it, it wouldn't do that. So excuse me for one second as we cut a mat for our little fella. Oops. Give me one second so I can read your comments too. Got my head stuck. Of course, I didn't make a through cut. Of course. There. Okay. So we're going to mat this little fella. See, just a hint of pink. And you know what? That's all it needs. Now, um... I don't know about you, but my trimmer, oh, my trimmer sucks. And I I don't have the heart to go and buy a new one because it still cuts. So just take a um, sanding block and get rid of all your fluffies along the edges. Okay. Quickly put on our little pink mat. I am going to put on our frame too. I'm going to bump it up with some foam tape. This stuff is great and the company no longer exists, which is not nice. Thank God I bought eight rolls the last time. And this is like only like maybe a quarter of a roll. The rolls are huge. Of course, I'm going to stick my pen. Yeah, that's great. I don't like the wider tape because I never need wide tape. I always need thin tape. So I was very happy to find this stuff. Yeah, and they're huge. I think I've, in the three or four years that I've been using this, I think I've only ever used two, and I use it on maybe 75% of my cards, so it just shows you. And I create every day, <laughs> so, yeah. And I very rarely have to trim, trim it to thin it out. Sorry, this is the boring part. <laughs> I know, buy extra, because guaranteed the next time you go to shop for it, it's not going to be there. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to carefully. This was, the frame was just built out of some stitch dies from Simon Says Stamp. Sorry, my hands are in the way here. So it's it's it really is just a hint of pink. You guys can probably see it better than even I can. There we go. And let's do our banner. So banner in yellow or pink? Need this element here. Pink and yellow? We can do that too. Absolutely. Um, I think we'll... Should I do more pink or more yellow? That's the question. Hmm... Because we can go pink and then do a yellow around it, or vice versa. We got cat hair in here. <laughs> pink background, more pink than yellow. More pink than yellow. Because we can just try doing a plain pink one too. All right, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna wing it <laughs> for size here. And how, you know what, we need a little bit more stamping. So let's take this and let's go back to our little blooms on the Wild Bloom set. And let's do some tone on tone. Let's do some tone on tone. I'm just going to mount our two little flowers on the same block here. And I know we're not going to need this whole pink strip, so I'm just going to do one end. I love the look of tone on tone because it's not always, the pattern isn't totally obvious, but so pretty. 
There we go. Change up the angles. Hi, Sandy. Maybe just a little bit higher. There we go. Some tone on tone. That'll bring bring uh, that'll bring the pink back in. So should I mat it in yellow? Hmm. <laughs> I know we're gonna banner cut this. Hi, Inky. I'm just gonna find my center of that piece. I'm gonna make a bird's mouth cut. So I just cut up the center, and then you're just gonna take it and cut up to the top of that line, and that way it'll always be even on both sides. There we go, so that's... Hi! <laughs> I'm so happy to see you! And I think we're, I think I'm just going to do, no, I just thought of something else. Um, how about I just put another banner that's a little bit different in size of yellow, in yellow underneath. I think that's what we'll do. How does that sound? I'm going to trim this off. Because I'm going to have to bump that up. Now i got to find a yellow that'll work. That's another hard thing. We may have to actually ink up a piece of white cardstock. I'm thinking we're going to because I do not have anything that's really close. So let's fudge it. I always keep um, my bag of white scraps because I'm always looking to do just little itty bitty things. To add to cards so I always keep them my white scraps hanging around and we're just gonna do direct to paper hmm we may have to go a little lighter <laughs> so let's do this um, that's too dark for my liking so let's sponge it we'll get a lighter shade that way Much, 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 much lighter. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfect either. It just has to have the hint of our yellow, right? Doo, doo, doo. All right, and you know what? I think we're going to do the exact same thing with our polka dot and do tone on tone. I'm just going to randomly splooch it. Don't forget to do the oddball ones hanging off the edge because that's what pattern paper is. It's n unless it's a repeatable pattern, it looks better when things hang off the edge. I think that's way more than we need, so I think we're good. I'm going to bring in my trimmer. We'll make it a thinner piece that kind of sticks out. Dun, ba, da, da. So I get a straight bottom edge here. All right. Can you guys see all right that I'm not going off camera here? Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this little fella peek out from underneath. So we get some yellow. I'm going to make it another banner end cut to this little fella. There we go. And then we're going to layer those. So I want it to kind of peek out from underneath. So we're going to actually glue it that way. And then I will trim it. If I can get my adhesive to cooperate. So just a hint of yellow, and I'm just going to trim it off at exactly the same point. So this is the sketch we're going with today. I am going to lock this down, 
get it. I am the glue queen. Center it on our four and a quarter by four and a quarter little mini card base. And because we're going to put this up here, I actually have to put some more foam tape on the bottom. But we'll run adhesive on the top because it sticks to that frame. Wow, my desk is a mess. I'm sure yours is after you create. <laughs> All right, and we're going to run just a small piece there. I always take the ends and make sure that they're wrapped around to the back. Oop, it doesn't want to come off today. Okay, well, sorry, I have to do a little trimming because it's sticking out and it's bugging me. All right. And we're going to stick that down. And you know what? I think because our sentiment is here, I'm going to forego piece number two. But uh, what do you guys think? Hey, kind of cute, huh? Yeah, I really like how we started it with the light blue and the dark blue because I think that totally set the mood. And then we added our accent colors with our yellow and our pink. So once again, if you weren't here from the start. This is what we started with. This was the color scheme that we chose. And I had to use this one today because I'm behind on my work. Shh, don't tell anybody. And this is what became of our creations using Catherine Pooler Designs, some of her new newest stamp creations. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys get a chance to um, stop by Catherine's store. If you go to Catherine Pooler's blog or her website at catherinepooler.com, there's a great big pink banner at the top and it says shop. And that's where you want to go to go and get these, uh, new stamps for your very, very own. And, uh, I know she said that she was off to go back to the fulfillment center and, Oh, must be you, Red B. <laughs> um, thank you, Colleen. Uh, I know Catherine was off to fulfill the orders that had just come in because um, she sold out of a few things, and I know there were people that were still shopping, so she was off to go and do that this morning. So lots of fun going on. Um, don't forget that uh, the newest stamp of approval will go... Um, it's... It's upside down to us. Oh, that's so strange. I wonder why it's not upside down to me. I wonder if I put more stuff in the... <laughs> I never know. Sorry for being upside down. It's not upside down to me. <laughs> um, uh, stand, the newest stamp of approval um, gets released on July 13th. Uh, so mark that on your calendar. I know, Catherine. It's been upside down the whole time. I wonder why. I do apologize. <laughs> you guys should have told me. Um, I don't know if it's the, maybe the angle of my camera. Yeah, because of course it doesn't show that to me. Turn, turn my. I can't. It's locked into my my contraption. <laughs> You'll just have to flip me upside down. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, stamp of approval gets um, released on July 13th. Um, Catherine is starting sneak peeks, I believe, tomorrow. So check out her blog. And I know, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure uh, Maureen and Christy and Heather and all of the Dream Team will be uh, sharing some goodies. I know I've got some goodies for you. I had fun with this uh collection and I know you guys are going to love it. It's going to be another staple in your stamping repertoire. So thanks for joining me today. I will be putting this up on YouTube. Hopefully it comes up the right direction for everybody else. Um, thanks for joining me today and I hope you guys get a moment to shop. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah, don't forget to check out katherinepooler.com and you can also go to my blog, Your Memories Canada, at blogspot.ca. 
You're very welcome, ladies. Have a great day. Bye, Christy. You're welcome, Sandy. Thank <laughs> you.